Today we no longer have libraries in our schools and universities. We have instead resource centres. The word library, which means a collection of books, is no longer applicable. Today our resource centres are storehouses of information. The information can be in a variety of physical formats. Videos, magazines, compact discs, computer discs or microforms. When a user comes into a resource or information centre, they're usually after facts and they don't care if that information is printed in a book, filmed on a video, photographed on slides or stored in a computer database. Hello and welcome to TV Ed. Today's program deals with computer catalogues in libraries. The changing attitude of library users has meant that libraries have had to change also. It's meant that collections are now more varied and with this change has come the need for information to be up to date and available quickly. Libraries have been able to keep up with this new user demand by installing computers. Computers are now directly linked with suppliers to help acquire the material. Then computers are used to record it, store it and retrieve it. With me today is Anne Hannan, a teacher in the Library Technician Certificate course at Box Hill College of TAFE. Anne, welcome to TV Ed. Well, libraries certainly are bigger and more complex. How do you locate something in a library nowadays? Well, a library needs an official record, a record of what all the items they hold in their libraries, whether they be magazines or books or compact discs. The official record needs to record the items held, describe them and then tell us where they're located. A bit like a catalogue. We used to have those in drawers, cards in drawers while I was at school. Yes, that's right. Well, catalogues have come a long way since then. The very first catalogues that we had, like when you were at school and I was at school, were the card catalogues. On each card we recorded in one item. The cards were then filed in drawers and held in with metal rods. Then, when I went to college, they had book catalogues similar to the one here. On each page of a book catalogue, you could record approximately 20 or 30 entries. This meant the catalogues were far more compact, and because they were cheaper to reproduce, we could have several copies around our libraries. And in my local library, I've noticed they've had something called a microfiche around. Yeah, that's right. That was the next development. Now, with a microfiche catalogue, what happened was that the catalogue of a library was filmed and then reduced in size so that on a piece of fish about that size a thousand or so entries could be recorded. Right but we can't read it like that so we've got to enlarge it. Yeah it was reduced so we have to put it into a reader, a microfiche reader. Now what I have to do is to put the fish in there and turn it on. Then on the screen I can see the entries. I can move the screen around to locate the item I want, either up or down, or side to side. All right. The next development was with computerisation, and we have what now are called OPACs, O-P-A-C, Online Public Access Catalogues. Right, and what does that actually mean in English? <laughs> right, online means that a terminal, very similar to this one, would be connected to a, computer's, a library's main computer. Right. Public access simply means that, that the users can come in and access the information via this terminal. Right, and do all public access or OPAC computers look like this? No, this is called a touch screen. And I'll explain how we use that in a minute. Some OPAC terminals look more like a personal computer. They have the screen and then they have a keyboard and you actually key in the information that you want. All right, well, how does this one work? All right, well, let's have a look at the screen and see what it says. On the screen, it says that it is the Box Hill Doncaster Regional Library Public Access Catalogue. So this records the holdings of all the libraries in the Box Hill Doncaster Regional Library system. There's also some basic instructions on how to use the catalogue on the screen. Right, that says you may search the library's collections by touching any of the access points listed, either author, title or subject. Right, that's very similar to any catalogue. If you went to um, a library and they had a card catalogue, you could look up the information you wanted under various access points or headings. Now, if you knew the author of a book, you could look up the author's name in the author section. Right. If you didn't know the author but you knew the title, you'd look up the title or access it under title. And then a lot of people will come into libraries and say, what have you got on a particular subject? 
So you're only interested in a subject area, so you would access it via the subject section. So this is just like any other catalogue where you can access the information by author, title or subject. Well, that seems fairly straightforward. What's <coughs> this other heading, Community Information? Well, the Community Information section is a special section of the Box Hill Doncaster Library catalogue. It tells us information that's relevant to their local community. For example, what clubs are available in the area, what toy libraries are there, how to get rid of your rubbish, right. and also how to control wasps. How to control wasps. Yeah. <laughs> well, under the wasp section, I think it tells, would tell us various companies we could contact to control our wasps. And of course, that would be something that was particularly relevant, mm -hmm. and they would have wanted the information very quickly, and so with a computer, they were able to access yes, it. Yes, that's right. Well, that makes sense, but um, how do you go about actually working one of these? Well, the best way to explain it, I guess, is to use it. Okay. okay. Who's your favourite author? Um, well, what about Hammond Innes? I've been reading a bit of his work lately. Okay, so you know the author, so we need to access the information. So we want to find out what books Box Hill Doncaster Library hold written by Hammond Innes. Right, so the heading that I'd be looking under or what I'd be accessing under is author. Because right. I know who he is. Yeah. Right. Now remember I said it's a touch screen. So what happens is when I touch the screen, the information on the screen changes. Now we know the author that we want to look up. So what I'm going to do is touch the author section. So watch right. what happens when I touch the word author. Right. So by touching the screen, the screen then changes. Mm. But I can't see Hammond Innes on the screen. No. Well, if you went to a card catalogue and opened a drawer, I don't think you'd find the entry you wanted straight away. You have to search further within the sequence. Right. So where do I touch now? Right. What we're going to do is slowly get closer alphabetically to the entry we want. Right. So we are going to actually search under the term that alphabetically precedes Innes. So the term that comes before Innes in the alphabet, we're going to touch. OK, so Innes starts with I, so before that is Hooper. That's H. right. So H comes first. So we will touch Hooper. Now, still no ham and Innes, but we're still going to get closer alphabetically. So I'm going to touch the entry that pre precedes Innes in the alphabet. Okay. So I, M, P comes before I, N, N. Right. So I'll touch that entry and we have a new screen again. And still no Hammond did Right, so we keep going. <laughs> right. So I, N, N comes be between I, M, P and I, N, S. Right. right. So I, M, P is the entry that precedes it. Right, now we've got an Innes there, but it's Gene. So H comes before J, so I must touch the entry preceding that. So it's the I N M entry. I N M precedes that, so you don't press the other in us, you press That's the right. one before that. Yeah. Okay. There it is. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right down the bottom right. of the screen. So and they then... have got books by Hammond Innes. Right. But that only tells us that they do hold something written by him, but it doesn't tell us what they hold. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the name. Right. OK, now that says that there are 68 entries. Press scroll up to display them. Scroll up, what does that mean? Right. Well, if you look down the bottom of the screen, you'll see several terms. One of them's help, so I think we'll try that. Seems pretty appropriate. Right. Now, this is going to explain some of these terms. One of the terms is start over, which means you can go back to the very beginning if you want to start again. Now scroll up says to touch to display more records. So that's like turning the page of a book, you go on to the next section. Back up, you can touch if you just want to go back one step in your search. And so what we can do now, it says now touch return to get back to where you were. So we'll go back to where we were. So I'll touch return. Right, so that's all been explained and scroll up actually means like turning a page. Mm, or looking okay. at the next card in a catalog, in a card catalog. So I'll touch scroll up. And we get more entries of books written by Hammond Innes. And we can keep going. Through all 68 of them. Yes, yeah, through all 68 of them, that's right. Scroll up. Right, if you look at that one, it says large print, hmm. air bridge. That would be in large print for visually impaired readers. 
Oh, that's excellent. So well, it's got all the information about the book on it. Well, that doesn't tell us all the information. That's only telling us it is in large print and the title is Air Bridge. Right. So I'm going to touch the actual entry and wait. Right, and now we get the full information or the full bibliographic description of that entry. Oh. So we find it's in large print and the call number is, lo is I double in. So that's where it's located on the shelves. The title was Air Bridge and it was published in Leicester in 1980 and it belongs to a large print series. Oh, well, that looks fairly straightforward, but um, what happens if you have a bit of trouble with your alphabet? <laughs> well, we all do that, don't we? Well, don't forget the instructions down the bottom of the screen. Remember that we had back up, which was going back a step. So we've now come back to just the list of titles under Hammond Innes. I can continue going over it, so I can scroll up. And I could, as you said before, go through 68 entries. Or if I've found the entry I want, I can go back to the beginning again, we'll start over. OK, so for people that have never really used a computer before, you can't really do anything wrong. You've always got a backup to go back mm, to. You've, and got, you've got your help section. All you need to remember is your alphabet and to remember to always search by the term that precedes the one that you want in the alphabet. Well, that's a great advancement on the card catalogue. Can OPAC do anything else? Oh yes, lots of other things. As I said, this terminal is linked to the library's main computer, as are the other technical services in the library. So the acquisition section is linked in. So as soon as, a li as soon as the library acquires an item, it can be recorded on the catalogue and it says on order. It's also linked up to the loan section so that it tells us if a book is out on loan or on the shelf, and if it is on loan, when it will be due back in the library. Oh, well, thanks for all that useful information for our libraries now, Anne. Well, we've had a look at the development of library catalogues, which are a record of a library's or a group of libraries' holdings, and seen their development from the card catalogue to the book to the microfiche and onto the computerised catalogue. From here, the development of library catalogues is as limitless as, as the development of computerisation. Join us again next time on TV Ed.